Hello guys, welcome back. You are sitting here with Kim E, the Diabetes MP, and I have a special, special treat for you. So in honor of Nurses Month, as well as Mental Health Awareness Month, I'm gonna be bringing on a couple of my friend girls, you know, some of your faves, to talk about not only being a nurse, but how we navigate this profession and do it in a way that is emotionally I'm gonna use your word, intelligent, okay? And that we could be emotionally aware because I really do want to incorporate both of these. You know, um, we are all probably looking at the news. We see how nurses are leaving the bedside in droves. And so, you know, wanted to have some conversation about that. And so today I have Tiffany Gibson, New Nurse Academy on all things social media here to join me. And we're just gonna have a couple of, you know, questions and answers and just kind of see how you know how her take is on the landscape of nursing so tiffany i'm gonna let you go ahead and introduce yourself and our other special guests as well because you know we are all the things so here we go <laughs> We are all of the things and I I am a professional troublemaker, but I'm also a mom. And right now, just the both worlds are intersecting at the moment. And so this is little Amina and she is teething and doesn't want anybody else but mama. And so she's gonna be here and working with us today. But I am a pediatric nurse by background. I have gone through my clinical experience and advanced in nursing into leadership. I'm currently a nurse manager right now in the primary care setting. But what brings me joy and what what wiggles my toes and lights my fire is really talking about emotional intelligence and nursing from all aspects, from diversity, equity, inclusion, in education and professional development in you as a person, specifically women, um, and how we can bring all of that together to grow. And by doing so, we'll be better nurses for it. And that is the reason why I wanted you up on here. Oh, <laughs> all of that, all of that, because we need all of that right now. So let's talk a little bit more about that because you are very, very vocal online and I love it. You know, um, I think me and you came and we've talked about this before. We've been nurses for a little bit. We done came through a few different regimes and, you know, but, you know, COVID really opened a lot of people's eyes and I feel like a lot of people are getting the backlash of it now. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but do you feel like when we were all in the thick of it, it was all about inclusion and the year of the nurse and all that. And now it's kind of like, okay, let's go back to our regular scheduled program. I don't know if you feel that way, but I'm getting the feeling of that. It definitely is back to baseline. So we're no longer highlighting civil unrest, social injustice, because that happened in 2020 as well, the height of it. Um, we're no longer viewed as heroes and we're no longer saving our masks and putting them in brown paper bags to reuse them again. We're no longer um, saving the world, right? That That's no longer happening. Now it's kind of like, let's get back to the money, unfortunately. And in the midst of that, there has been highlights in our holes in our broken system of healthcare. These things were always there, but we could e easily avoid them and or mask them because we were able, we weren't in the spotlight. The profession wasn't in the spotlight. We were able to get around some things because one, we still had a workforce. And so things weren't as detrimental, but then after 2020, our workforce has dwindled. Dwindled because people have left but also people have died right millions of people have died and so we are starting to feel the effects of that and then people have left the profession they they no longer want to be bothered which i get it we went through trauma you didn't mm -hmm. deal with your trauma and now you want to do something else because this doesn't feel good anymore and so they left but then there's still a whole system healthcare that has to still operate and we're doing so as such a deficit that it is, it's, it's troubling. 
Mm -hmm. It's absolutely troubling. And now that I'm in management um, and I see the behind the scenes and I hear the conversations, I'm like, I understand why people would want to leave. So, you know, I'm always at these meetings causing trouble and asking questions and, you know, bucking the system as a manager. But that's okay because no one else is having these discussions. And so because I know better, I want to do better and I want to break these conversations up. Mm -hmm. So how have you been dealing with your mental health because i know with all you just like ran down all the things that you have on your plate mm -hmm. and i don't think anybody was untouched with stuff i mean life happened over these last few couple of years you know um you had a baby a whole whole another human baby, whole baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you were already a mother you yeah. already you've been an instructor i mean all of that like how have you been prioritizing your mental health in this space as a nurse uh well first i've decreased my time on, on social media and it's it, it i don't think people realize it at first but now it's become more apparent because of the things that i used to do going live and reels and all the things i'm not doing anymore because i don't want to Mm -hmm. Not that I can't. I don't want to prioritize that. I don't want to prioritize offering myself to other people, which I think is the umbrella. So no matter what that looks like for you, if you don't have the capacity to offer yourself to be of service to others, nursing, motherhood, social media, content creation, you have to stop at some point because I am constantly pouring and I'm not refilling. And so one of the things that I say often is I pour from my overflow. I don't pour from my cup because in pouring from my cup, that means I have to refill my cup. And sometimes I don't have the resources to fill my cup. So what's in my cup is for me. And then anything that's overage or spillage and overflow, that's for everybody else, including my kids. Sometimes I have to tap out and say, all right, dad, grandma, auntie, somebody come get these kids. Um, yep. because I need sleep. I need rest. I had to learn to take my cape off. I had to learn that I I, um, I cannot do it all. I don't want to do it all. And I'm not chasing balance. That's mm -hmm. the that narrative that's out there. Work-life balance. Yeah. Work is such a small part of your life. So mm -hmm. if work is 50% and your rest of your life is 50%, when do you have time to go swimming and go to the mall and hang out with your friends and do things with your kids when do you have time bless you if you're only splitting that with work and work yeah. is taking up 50 percent of your life that's not a fun way to live mm -hmm. so i have managed to make sure that i have decreased my availability to people mm -hmm. i have prioritized myself in ask for what I want and what I need. That's one thing I have not done, which I think mm -hmm. is a cultural and a generational thing. But when I need help, when I don't feel my best, I verbalize that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, and that has been very helpful. Um, and so that those are the things that I've been doing and just making sure that I am prioritizing what's important to me in the moment and not trying to find balance in all things. Is you know what? I'm glad you said that because um, I, I do yoga and meditation. I go to like one, one of our sorors just opened up a yoga studio in our area. And we do journal prompts while we're like stretching and all that. And so, and that I love it because it's just not yoga. It's like lots of reflection. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she brought up was when we talk about pouring from our cup, we always think about like that the cup is not full like we're pouring from our cup but the cup has to be full it's right. like you said, it has to be from an overflow but when we visualize that and when people say that i think what triggers for people is that like you're just pouring till it gets empty then you gotta fill it back up no yes. your cup is always in overflow and yes. you're getting from the overflow Yes. And I think that is hard for, you know, certain groups of people, women being one of those, you know, yes. mothers. Yeah. But then something else that I can think about, too, is two things. It's OK to change your mind. Yes. It's really OK to change your mind. Like yes, it is. I, had a, I had a friend that was like, well, there was something I was pursuing, something new. 
And as I was doing it, I was like, eh, I don't think I like this. Does it fit? And, it doesn't fit. Yeah, I was like, I don't. And I myself had to resolve that, like, I felt like it was a failure, you know? But it wasn't because how would I have known if I liked it or not if I did not try? And so when my friend asked me, I was like, well, and I started to explain and over explain. And then I just stopped. I said, you know what? Simply put, I changed my mind. I ain't want to do it no more. That's it. Yeah. But here's <laughs> the thing. Here's the thing. All of that is data, right? Like failure is data. Trial and error is data. I don't know if I like this if I don't try. And I realize eh, it's not my thing. So I'm not going to try it anymore. Instead of just blatantly saying no, you want to have new experiences and you want to be, you know, you want to live. And so I'm going to explore. And in my exploring, I'm going to learn more about me and learn about the things that I like and I enjoy. And then I'm going to learn that there's some things that I don't like and enjoy, which may include my job, which may include my man, which may include other things, um, my clothes, right? Like we can return things for a reason um, and we have the prerogative to change our mind. And so God gave us free will. Mm -hmm. that we get upset when we feel like we didn't see things through to the end, but to what cost, to what detriment? Yeah. So yeah. do I to stay here for the sake of saying I was here for years, but I was mm -hmm. miserable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or do I want to yeah. say, or do I want to say I tried a couple different things and while it didn't work out for the long haul, I learned a lot along the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, here's another thing. Um, and I recently posted this, um, on, on Instagram, the quote is, I will not set myself on fire to warm others. Oh, yes. And I feel like, especially in the field of nursing, yes. we have always been at this, I'm going to do everything. And yes, I want to give good quality care. Yes. But there is a limit. Yes. Like, and there, there's a personal limit from me, not on a selfish tip, of like, I just don't want to be a good person, human being, but it's like, not at the expense of my own mental health, not at the expense of my family, my quality time, you know, I'm going to take the PTO. <laughs> I'm going to take it, okay? And I'm going to take it all, you know, I'm going to take it all. There's nothing gonna roll over. And and so I think too, is, is that, that mindset of feeling like we're letting people down, but are we? Or is that something that's a lot in our minds? And is the culture set up for us to feel that way too? That's it too. It's a cultural belief. I also may think it's a generational belief um, where you feel like, well, that's your word and you said you was going to do it. So you have to do it instead of saying, I understand at the time where I committed to this, this is what I said, but currently things are different now and I don't feel the same. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We also have to realize that we can't manage other people's emotions. And so feel like I can't say no because they're gonna be upset and, and mad. And yes, you love somebody, you have empathy for them, you have compassion. You don't wanna make somebody upset, but to what cost? Mm -hmm. And so am I sacrificing my own happiness and my own well being to make sure that somebody else is okay? Because you can't guarantee that they're gonna do that for you. And then we go back to the cup analogy. I'm pouring and pouring and pouring into you. It's not mandatory that you pour it back into me, but that's what we think should happen because I did it to you, but I can't control your behavior. That's right. Right? And so we have we have to be selfish and look out for self. We have to put ourselves number one. And that's, it's, it's really self-preservation because like, you know, I have been at jobs where like, there is dread going into the job. You know, come Sunday, you're just like, you can't even enjoy your Sunday or whenever the day before you return back to work mm -hmm. because you're just anticipating all what you're running into or the anxiety or the depression that comes from that. But mm -hmm. you know what? Let me ask you this then, because you have been, you know, you're, you're a nurse manager now. You've been a clinical instructor. And so I know that you have seen nurses at different levels. How... Why would you say it's important for people to, especially nurses, to prioritize their mental health? And what are some, maybe a practical, one practical that they can do today? It's important for nurses to prioritize their mental health because if they don't get themselves together, how can they get somebody else together? Plain and simple. I cannot help you through 
your sickness, your crisis, your whatever, your treatment, if I do not have a clear mind, and I cannot have a clear mind if I'm cluttered and clouded with anxiety, with depression, with sleeplessness, with with um, dis distraught, with with disordered thinking. With I can't. I cannot help you be your best you if I cannot manage myself. And I also don't want to center my emotions and my thoughts in the midst of your treatment, in the midst of your care, in the midst of what you have going on. And that's why it's important for nurses to manage their mental health. But that's really emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. There's four domains in emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship management. I cannot get to social awareness and relationship management if I don't first have self-awareness. Is this for me? Do I have the ability to do this effectively and efficiently? What am I feeling? What are my thoughts and why? And then what do I do about them? If I can't, if I can't handle that, then how am I supposed to come to work and provide customer service and great care and pay attention to detail and provide the patient experience, which now that I'm in management, that's what they talk about. Press mm -hmm. gate scores and HCAP numbers and all the things that we heard as bedside nurses. And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that I'm on the other side of it, there's a correlation between patient satisfaction and the dollars. And that's why they paid attention to it. For me, it's not about the dashboard. It's not about the numbers. It's about the care. Mm -hmm. And if you're consistent with the care, then the dashboard and the numbers will change because you're consistent with the care. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking to my nurses and I'm coaching them, if they do not feel good about themselves, if they have lots of things going on personally that is the forefront of their mind, they're not going to remember the little things that make the patient experience well. And I work mm -hmm. in pains, right? So that 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 normalizing or humanizing the the interaction with the provider is really important. They don't care about any of that if they just had a fight with their boyfriend before coming into work. Yeah. They don't care about any of that if their seventh month old won't sleep all night, right? <laughs> and so they're they're exhausted. And and I don't think I don't think we give sleep enough credit. And so yeah. if you're not sleeping, your brain cannot reset. Your body cannot rejuvenate. So we are not getting the best version of you. And then how are we supposed to care for our kids and work at the top of our license and, and provide great care? We can't. So, ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so one of the things that nurses can do is schedule some thinking time throughout the day mm -hmm. to really check in with themselves. Mm -hmm. How am I feeling? I don't think we even notice, especially as nurses and as women, that our body gives us signs and we brush them off. Oh, mm -hmm. I have a headache. Oh, I, I'm hungry. Oh, my stomach feels like this. Or my back aches or my, my neck hurts. And we don't realize that we're holding tension. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that it's the sleep that's doing this. We don't realize, we don't give stress enough credit. Mm -hmm. Stress can do a number on the body. Yeah. Check in with yourself to say, am I breathing deeply? Mm -hmm. I realize that when I am tense, my breathing is shallow and my posture is off because I'm tense. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I always have back pain. Like my back is always aching. And I'm like, well, Tiff, you were a nurse. You worked at the bedside for years and that's what it is. And I kind of wrote it up and I'm like, no, I'm not breathing deeply because I'm tense. And I realize that when I'm deep in thought about something that's stressful, my, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning forward a little bit. And so that's putting pressure on my lower back. That's where that's coming from. When I'm washing the dishes, my posture is off and I'm complaining about my achy body because I've been at work all day, but no, that's not what that is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I am now more in tune with myself, with my body and I can correct myself in the moment. So does that mean um, changing my posture? Does that mean um, going to sleep when I'm tired instead of pushing through? I don't like that push through. I'm tired. I'm going to bed now yeah. because nobody needs this now. Mm -hmm. I will do this later. Um, triaging my responsibilities and my priorities. What needs to be done now? What can be? What can hold on to later? What needs to be delegated to somebody else? Um, so those are small, simple steps that you can start now. It's just getting in tune with your body. 
-hmm. and, and seeing what that means. You should not be walking around in pain, chronic pain, chronic GI symptoms, chronic mm -hmm. headaches. Those are all signs that something is not right. Yep, it is. You, um, I love what you said. Um, meditation has normally what I do, I get up in the morning, I walk. And I, I mean, I'm not a morning person, but I do it because that's actually when it's the best time for me. You know, once my kids, my, my family gets up, we're hitting the ground running. They're off to school, I'm working. You know, your kids are involved in things. We all have the same similar story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I found that if I don't do things in the morning, that the chances of them happening in the evening yeah can yeah. rationalize them away so yeah. i make a point you know to show up for myself and i wake up early in the morning and i go walking and it's around my neighborhood it's safe i stay within where i'm safe you know because yeah. the sun is not up but it's so peaceful and quiet and i'm yes. coming off of my sleep and i'm able to think you know mm -hmm. and i pray and i like i just kind of assess what i'm feeling you know like because for me the thoughts can rush into my brain as soon as I wake yes, up. Yes. Yes. And so I have to, I got to get myself centered. And then when I come home, I normally do about 10 minutes of meditation. There's lots of people on YouTube that you can look at, but there's yeah. one particular girl that she, that I follow that she does like different challenges that'll dress like, you know, different things, you know, that you could be running through your mind, like insecurities or like fear mm -hmm. or like trouble with sleeping or anything like that. And it really is good for me just to start my day clear, you know? because the day will hit you like a ton of bricks <laughs> life is gonna light life is gonna life and 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 i too have started to wake up before the house right so trying transitioning to being a mom of one to being a mom of two um while still running a business and then i i became a nurse manager in december so it's also fairly new um i did not adjust to the different changes that was happening. I thought the old TIFF can still operate with all these new changes and it wasn't working. Yeah. It was not. Um, and so I realized that what I needed was quiet time and thinking time. Time to brain dump, time to um, just map out my day. And what it turns out, it's just being intentional. What kind of day do I want to have? So two questions I asked myself, who do I need to be? Who do I want to serve? today so again we're prioritizing and who do i need to be to serve them mm. so some days it's the girls right yeah. some days it's my man some days it's work some days it's me and so who do i need to serve and then who do i need to, who would i need to be to serve them but it's all intentional yeah it's all yeah. about intention and when you start your day off with ease um it, it just lends for a better day I used to wake up and go straight to my phone. What messages did I miss overnight? What are, you know, what, what's in my DMs? What are people saying? What's the hot news? But then I realized I'm taking in other people's energy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like starting my day like that. I know, I felt the same way. Taking in other people's energy. I didn't want to start my day like that. And so now I don't look at my phone until, until after eight o'clock. I, I don't even check emails for work until quarter to nine. Yeah. Um, and that's all and that's all intentional. And I um it, it has allowed me just to be more pleasant and more present yeah. and more focused. Mm -hmm. And you have to because I don't know if you I know you've worked with people that's like that you'll when you finally do check your emails, like here in these last couple of weeks, I I have now I have hard starts and hard stops for me because I have to, you know, but you'll yeah, look at an yeah. email and somebody has sent you an email at 1130 p.m. And I'm like, you'll never yeah. get that from me or five o'clock in the morning. I'm never going to send that. Yeah. I, you're going to see I'm going to respond at 930 <laughs> in the morning. But, here, but, here, but here's the thing. There's so many systems and processes in place that allow you to work whenever, but it doesn't disrupt the other person. Because mm -hmm. I am a morning person. I'll wake up at 4.45 in the morning and do laundry and do dishes and season the meat for dinner and do all the things. Mm -hmm. And I and I may be um, 
If I have a to-do list for work, I may start writing things and compiling things, but I'm going to schedule them for 8.30. You're not gonna see that I'm up at three o'clock in the morning working. <laughs> You're not gonna see that part. Um, so there's, I think, I, I don't, I don't think people appreciate delegating the way they should. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize that part of your mental health is realizing that when you are operating out of your zone of genius, it puts more stress and strain on you because you're doing something you don't like or you're doing something that takes a lot of time. I have a housekeeper. I order food from Instacart and in, in Amazon Prime. I um, do all use all the apps to do all the things, right? I try to automate my life as much as possible to take away the decision making and a lot of the things. Mm -hmm. If I have, my job is already high level and high stress, and I have an eight year old and a seven month old, and I have a whole man. I don't want to make a lot of other decisions that are unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> And that's yeah. just for me, right? what works for me in my household. And so in order for things to run the way they need to run and for me to not feel like I'm being pulled in 50 million 11 directions, I need to start my day with myself, take the thoughts from my head out and put them on paper, mm -hmm. organize them, and then see what I can delegate and when does do these things need to happen. That decreases my stress level off the bat. Mm. Off the bat. Um, and life is going life. And so things don't work out smoothly all the time. There's bumps and it's supposed to because that's life. But when these bumps happen, it's not a crisis, right? I understand that it's temporary and I can get back on track. Um, but because I'm mentally clear, I get back on track yes. faster. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't wait down. And I don't hold on to it and I can move on. Mm, that's good. That's good. Well, girl, I don't want to hold you any longer because I know, again, both of us, mothers working, you're mothering right now. And so, yes. <laughs> but I thank you so much. This is like a conversation that has to continue to happen. And I'm so happy that you are talking about it. Um, let everybody know where they can find you if they don't know where to find you. Yes, yeah, so you can find me on all social media platforms at New Nurse Academy. I'm also on LinkedIn at Tiffany E. Gibson. You can find me on my website, newnurse-academy.com. Join my email list, uh, sign up for my community. And also you can book me as a speaker if you wanna talk about emotional intelligence. If you want to talk about how to have professional development with your team, whether they are leaders or whether they are staff nurses. If they're not nurses, what do we? What does what does emotional intelligence look like in healthcare? That's um, what I love to talk about. So please join me on social media. Um, go to my website to learn more about the things that I'm doing, and uh, hop in my DMs and let's talk about emotional intelligence. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, Tiffany, again for coming in. Um, I know you fit me in. Thank you so much. No <laughs> problem. I appreciate this conversation. Thank you. And guys, you've been sitting here again with Kim E., the Diabetes MP, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.